tell us your name and spell it. Hans Eric Becklin, H A N S space E R I C space B E C K L I N. Great. Well, thanks for coming in today, Hans. And um, please tell us a story, a story or two about your experience with the ELCA. Well, I guess uh, my my story of the ELCA really does start with the ELCA. I'm 17 years old. I uh, was born into a family uh, that is a long-time Lutheran family, but uh, I guess I haven't known anything but the ELCA. Um, I, I guess I have a few stories I'd like to share, uh, just a couple actually. Um, when I first really was cognizant about, I guess, my identity as a Lutheran, uh, I really felt that one of our most powerful and one of my favorite traditions is the music making in the church. Um, at this time, I was maybe six or seven years old, and I was going to a uh, Lutheran church in Belleville, Wisconsin, uh, in a farming rural area uh, south of Madison. And I would always go to church every Sunday with my parents. Um, but I would sit with a very special uh, teacher of mine from uh, Sunday school. And she was the person who taught me how to read music. And I'm, I'm a very big fan of choral music and I, I like to sing. So I guess I really credit the church with my first introduction to music. I've been very involved in, in music in my short time uh, here, I guess. And in my, in my life, I think it's been a very integ integral, integral part. And I, I'm very thankful for, I guess, the music and the liturgy in the church. And so that's probably my first, my first story. My second story um, is, is a little bit more heartfelt. Um, when I was in about seventh grade, uh, my grandfather passed away suddenly. He had committed suicide. And I was just in the middle of my confirmation. Um, I was very sad. I was very close to my grandfather. And I really found a place of solace in the church. Uh, I was in the middle of my first year of confirmation and my pastor was just wonderful. Um, she help me understand that, you know, everyone is loved by God and really helped, helped explain, I guess, Lutheran theology that I better understand now in, in a way that was understandable, it made sense, it was filled by the Bible, it was very indicative of those sorts of things, but it was also very comforting. Um, I had a very rough time that year, uh, and I really credit the church with a lot of my happiness today. I've, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, very involved, and maybe someday would like to serve the church, and I and I credit a lot of that to that experience. Um, so yeah. So what do you think? Um, what do you think we're able to do within the church that, that keeps people engaged? I mean, you talked about some very personal experiences. Um, what would you like to see the church focusing on as it moves forward? Well, I think that I always say that the most important thing things for the church to be focusing on are, firstly, staying true to our Lutheran heritage, um, and I, and I say that because we are. A Christian church, but we are more explicitly a Lutheran church. Uh, so I would say a part of it is staying true to our Lutheran heritage in, in many ways. Um, I, I feel that a, continu a continual exploration of Luther's writings and, uh, in Concord with the Bible are, are very important, that we need to do that. But I think at the same time, we need to make the church relevant to people my age. Um, it's I think it's difficult for a lot of people who didn't grow up in any church to envision themselves as, as churchgoers. I, I can't say I really know why that is, 
but I, I think that the church needs to work on making itself a more welcoming place. Um, I feel welcome in the church, but I think that's probably because I've never known anything else. Um, I, I have a hard time believing, though, that people who didn't really understand the, the church and the way that it, it works would be, would be drawn to Lutheranism as I am. And I think that our theology is strong, our faith is strong, our testimony is strong. Uh, we are an evangelical Lutheran church in America, the evangelical Lutheran church in America. And I think that we're really able to do things, uh, lots of things. I, I mean, I, could get, I can give examples. I think that... Uh, sure, go ahead. Um, I, I think that, for example, something very pertinent to this assembly, um, for example, I, I think that at least most of the people that I know and most of the people that I have grown up with and spent my time with who are not churchgoers would like to see the church being more welcoming of the people that it has often discarded. Um, I also feel that the church would like, that people outside of the church, not the church, would like to see, I think, more of a unified Christianity. And I think that's very relevant to the United Methodist uh, full communion agreement that we're actually discussing this afternoon. Um, I, I also feel that um, w initiatives to help reduce global poverty, to work for peace, especially in the Middle East, where I think people of my generation feel it is so desperately needed. I, I really feel that those are things that people of my generation can get behind and that faithful, lifelong Lutherans, uh, such as my parents and my grandparents, can also get behind. And I think that's a legacy that we can leave the church that is strong, that is evangelical, and that is rooted in the 21st century, which is where we are. We are not meant to be a time capsule in history. We're meant to be delivering the gospel in all ways and all, all senses, in my opinion. And I think that that's something that's very important to me. Um, I, sure. Um, I would say that I think the church needs to work very hard on not making people who are already in the church feel disenfranchised by the church. And I guess this is kind of a, a addition to the statement I made earlier. I would say that people who are here in the church who feel like they are being abandoned by their church. And, and that can happen on both sides of any issue, even when one person's way is gotten and one person's way isn't. Both sides can sometimes feel disenfranchised, especially when we're trying to compromise and make something that can produce agreement, that can produce a 66.67 majority or greater. When we're looking for something like that, I think we need to be mindful of the fact that to stay as the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, we need to be rooted in the gospel, we need to be rooted in our traditions, and we need to be rooted in the 21st century. All of those things together to come to some sort of middle ground that can be relevant to everyone, that can connect to the Bible for everyone, that can connect to their own spiritual experiences. And I really feel that that's what the church needs to be. I, as I said earlier, I really love Lutheran music. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a small congregation where, uh, you know, contemporary music and those sorts of things were not the norm. But I've, I've grown to love those things. I, I definitely see the validity of everything. I think that church is different things for different people. 
and that one church body does not have to be the same thing for everyone. And that would really be what I would say is my most important thing that I'd like to say is that the church does not need to be the same thing for everyone and still be one church body. I think that that is, I think we, we can deal with disagreement and differences because we do have so much in common with, within, our, within our fold with the Methodists, the UCC, the uh, churches of the Lutheran World Federation abroad, and uh, Lutheran churches and other churches who we have full communion agreements with and not here in uh, the United States. I think that for us to stay, for us to stay relevant, we need to combine all of those things and really, and just really work for unity even with our disunity. So. Thank you so much. Thank you.